What's going on, guys? I hope you're having a great day out there today. Guys, we're going to go over the uh, Arma 3S, 4S, because they are pretty much the same. Um, differential maintenance, how to tear them apart and how to get them out of the car. Um, I recently put together a video on the 6S line going over, you know, a pretty in-depth um, video on how to maintenance and tear apart the 6S differentials. And a bunch of guys were asking, hey, can you do one of these for the 3S and 4S line? And, um, you know, I haven't had the differentials apart yet on my Outcast 4S here. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to go ahead and tear this thing open, um, go over the differentials, show you guys how to tear them out of there for anybody that's newer. And I uh, just kind of go over the whole process. So we're going to go ahead and tear the uh, rear differential out of the Outcast because I've noticed the rear seems a little bit loose. Um, I want to put it just a little bit thicker fluid in the back end of this thing because I've been getting a lot of ballooning going on and I just kind of want to go over them and I've never checked them. So <laughs> who knows how much fluid is even in there. So if you're interested in learning on how to tear and maintenance 3S and 4S differentials, guys, stay tuned, everybody. Now, obviously, depending on if you have an Outcast or a Creighton or a Typhon 3S, um, or if the 4S line, obviously, I mean, if some of the little bits and pieces, the way the shocks or the shock towers and things mount up um, to your wing will be slightly different. But overall, it's the same process um, with getting basically this top half of the bulkhead, and which is part of your shock towers on the front and the rear, um, getting those off, pulling your links off. Um, I've done this before with minimal screws. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to kind of show a little bit easier way as far as things not getting in your way because you can literally pull out just your center brace and the four or so screws underneath and get this top off there just enough to get the differential out but we're actually going to pull that off you know, disconnect the shocks and stuff and show you to get everything out of the way and kind of show a proper way i guess <laughs> the best way to explain it because you can do it and once you've done it a few times you'll learn you don't have to remove quite as much and I'll point that out as we go along here, but we're gonna go ahead and get the back pulled out of this thing and do that first. Uh, on the outcast here, there'll be this screw down here will remove, which will disconnect the bottom skid um, from the top half because obviously the rear bumper and all this is attached to the upper part of the bulkhead, so which is also your shock tower. So if you bust one of these, basically it's all one piece. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the shocks disconnected. I'm gonna pull each one of the shocks off the lower A-arm and get as much freed up and also pull off the center brace on just the back end to flip this up. All right, to start out with, we're gonna pull both shock screws out of the lower A arms, and then we're also gonna pull out the upper links right here. Um, this link, your upper tie rod link, um, it screws into your bulkhead right there, which is not a great amount of light, but pull the screw out of there and the one on this side right here. And you will need a two millimeter uh, hex driver um, to do that and I highly suggest as usual getting a set of the good MIP tools it'll save yourself a lot of aggravation and strip dot screws. So once you get that done your upper link should pop right out your back shocks should come right off leave those just go ahead and dangle on either side and as you guys can see you know now well this one got a little jammed up but go ahead get those links get your shocks flopping so that everything's nice and loose and then we're going to go flip the car over. Now, obviously, your drive shafts might slide. The sliders might come all the way undone. Um, just spin them. There's little notches. There's one of these little plastic grooves that are wider than the other ones. Go ahead and line that back up until she falls together nice and smooth again, if they come apart. Now, I went ahead and removed the screw that holds together your bottom skid to your upper part of the bumper because right there, that way, that can split along with your upper part of the bulkhead. I always use a magnetic tray to kind of keep everything from getting lost. Um, all the screws that hold your shocks or your upper tie rod links are all the same size, so don't worry about, you know, there was no differences in any of those. Now, on my Outcast 4S, I am running the M2C bash bar on here, which has been a real chassis saver. Uh, but all you have to do is remove these two screws on this end. Um, if you don't have the bash bar, obviously these will be sunken down into the plastic, but you remove these two, this one, and this one, and then you go ahead and remove the bottom skid, and then there should be two more underneath the plastic here. Now all the screws that hold the bulkhead together are a 2.5 millimeter. And you're just going to go ahead, wind these out. They're real long. <laughs> Take that one, and then there's a real short little one that just helps hold on the skid plate right there, and then that one right there. So basically on the bottom side at first, you're gonna get the three longs and one short. 
Now, as I was saying at the beginning here, depending on which model you have, the Typhon 3S um, or the, one of the Ed Creighton or Outcast 4S, some of your screws back here might be different. Now, on this Outcast, I just kind of lightly lifted up this plastic, and I forgot on this model, there isn't the two separate ones down here anymore. Now, like on a Typhon 3S, I know this is a 6S, but on the 3S down here, there are four. Um, it's a little different, but I just kind of wanted to point that out that if it looks like you were missing screws, we'll leave that there. <laughs> but on the Outcast, it is just these two, this one, and this really long one here. You don't even have to pull off the rear skid here on the Outcast, whereas I'm assuming the Creighton 4S is also the same way. And one little side note that I kind of forgot to mention initially during the video, guys. If you are hearing noise in your differentials, if you're hearing a clicking or grinding noise whenever you are hitting the throttle, Usually the problem is in your rear differential. If you are hearing a clicking or grinding or weird noise when you're braking, it's usually in your front differential. I just wanted to add a little side note to help kind of diagnose your issue. Next up, you're gonna go ahead and remove your center brace. All you're gonna do is loosen up that screw right there. Don't take it the whole way out and then the pin will slide off to the side here. And then next, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the center drive shaft. This just pulls forward and then it'll slide right out. Again, I'm going through the way that you're kind of supposed to do it. I have been able to kind of get to this point and leave the motor and the center um, dry shaft in there and just lift up on this really hard, like lift it up a bit, and then you can kind of slide this top plate out of here. But we're going to go ahead and do it the right way and slide the motor out of the way for a moment. And um, all you got to do to do that, take your center brace out. There's a screw here underneath the chassis that comes into this little red bit. Take that screw out, and then you lift up on this. Sometimes it can be really tough. A lot of times I'll take a flathead screwdriver as I'm lifting up on that and kind of give it a wiggle between the chassis and the motor to slide that thing backwards. But I'm going to go ahead and get the motor slid out and then this top piece will come right off. Now this part can be really frustrating. If you've never had this out for a long time, um, there could get a lot of dirt and gunk filled up underneath your motor, which will make it not slide forward very easily. But once you take that screw out of the bottom, you go ahead and slide this red piece out of the way. That'll allow the motor to slide backwards now. Now what I like to do is take a big flathead screwdriver and stick it up underneath this front tab and lift up on it. And at the same time, put that screwdriver in the back section between the motor plate and the chassis and kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle. And then it should slide right out. But of course, I got this little clip attached to the back end. Now, then you get your whole motor slides out of there. As you can see, you know, all this dirt and grime and stuff in there starts to bind up these little slides right here. So when these are out, it's a good idea to clean those little slides out on the chassis and also clean these up and uh, give them a little brushing. So now that you got the motor out of the way, the center drive shaft out of here, your two rear links undone, and your shocks disconnected from your towers, this thing will pop right off. So now you go ahead and got your whole upper part of the bulkhead with your wing and your shocks and everything attached, and uh, you got the whole piece out in one swipe there. And now you got full access to the rear differential. You can see here. Now you got a nice, easy access to get to it. Go ahead and pull it out of there. Now this was one thing from the older 3S and 4S lines that I'm sure many of you know that have the car, that they finally got away with the plastic differential gears. I mean, in the older models, when I first started with these, all this was plastic, and those gears loved to strip out and constantly tear themselves apart. It was what made me originally sell my first, uh, the V1 Creighton 4S, because... I couldn't keep the gears together and it was constantly destroying the rear diffs because the input gear and the ring gear and everything was plastic and it just had constant problems. But all you gotta do now, grab a hold of that whole thing, slide out your drive shafts right from the ends, and now you got your whole rear diff in your hand. And I go ahead and pop this thing out of here and I'll show you how you gotta get this apart now. I've never had these apart yet, but the drive shafts are now held on differently than my original V1 also. Um, they used to, what I was getting ready to say there was on the old V1s, there used to be a screw. You have to stick your Allen your driver down through the drive shaft and then there was a screw inside here actually. But now that they've gotten rid of these and they've gone these CVD, these sliders, these drive shafts hold up way better. Now on this version, there is a grub screw on either side right there. So you want to go ahead and loosen up those grub screws and then we'll slide off our drive shafts and then we can uh, go ahead and split open 
the plastic part here that holds our diff and our input gear. Now comes the fun part of getting all greasy. <laughs> now you'll see on either side here, there's a two millimeter grub screw. You go ahead and wind that out, not all the way, but almost all the way, and she will slide back out. And you'll also notice on here, there's a little dimple. So make sure you line that back up again when you put it back together with your grub screw. But go ahead and take both of those off of there and dry shaft slide right off, set those out of the way. Now you got your whole diff. And there are two screws on here. There's another two millimeter right here. And then on the opposite side, another two millimeter here. You wanna go ahead and take those out. And at that point, we can split this whole case open and get this thing apart. I'm gonna go ahead and take these two screws out real quick and I'll bring you guys back before we split it. All right, well, we got our two screws out right here. So now you stick a screwdriver in here and kind of just lightly pry it open and the whole case will split just like this. Now make sure you keep track of what side was on your gear side. Um, I'm not honestly sure. I know on the other, the three, my older 3S line, they there was a certain order um, in which these had to go together. But go ahead and slide that open. Give this a wiggle, and now your whole pinion, and there's all your gear or your bearings for your pinion. Check those while you're in there. Make sure there's not a bunch of play or they're starting to get torn up. Um, these ones still feel nice and smooth. The pinion looks great. Um, so that part all looks good. And now you can check out the gear on your diff. This one, the amount of abuse this car has seen at the skate park and landing under throttle, I'm amazed on the condition of these gears. Honestly, <laughs> I thought, you know, they'd start to look pretty worn or beat up or even a chipped tooth, but they look pretty good. Now to split your diff case, you're going to want to go ahead and remove these four two millimeter screws, and then we'll be able to lift off the whole gear here and get inside of your diff. I'm going to clean this case up and get some of the grease off of here so it's not quite so messy, and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, well, we're ready to open up the diff here. And uh, guys, just a little side note, I always throw down, you know, some paper towels or a white blanket or something whenever I'm working on anything to do with diffs and just anything with a lot of gears and pieces, because um, it's nice because it shows up easier. Um, it's just a personal preference. Maybe I'm just, you know, bothered is just the way I am. But I like to throw it down because as you're setting pieces down and if anything weird comes out or a little shim, it's a lot easier to show up on a white blanket than sometimes, you know, like the dark red or black stuff on my pit map. So that's why I always lay down, um, you know, something easier to see colors on. Definitely helps. Um, that and it keeps your regular pit map and everything else not so greasy. <laughs> but we're gonna take out these four screws. Get all these out of the way. And if you're wondering or need to order one, these are a 37 tooth spur for your rear diff. I'm pretty sure they're probably the same on the front and the rear. But now we've got those four screws out of there. Go ahead and just give her a light little wiggle. And all your pieces, there's all your gears inside. Um, obviously, it's a lot different than your 6S because your 6S has all the the uh, cross with all your sun gears and all that stuff. This is a different setup. But as you can see, um, there's not a ton of fluid in here. And this always seems to be the name of the game with Arma Diffs. They put just enough in there to keep it lubricated, but not enough to actually properly make the diff work and slip or not slip how it's supposed to. Um, all the gears and everything look great in there. You'll notice when you pull these out, there's one set that's high and one set that's low. So just keep track of that when you pull these apart, you know, which side is which. Um, so you put them all back together again. And inside here is your main input gear. All your bearings, check all your bearings on the diff to make sure those are good. But all you're gonna do if you're pulling this completely apart is slide these gears out and everything will come right out and fall. You, know, you can basically pull all these pieces out super easy. Um, I'm not going to pull them out. I'll show you here real quickly. Um, maybe I have a pair of needle nose. But to grab a hold of these, the top, you just grab a hold of them, give them a little bit of a wiggle, and these pins will slide out right there. And then your gear comes right out. And you'll see there's little lineup holes down inside there that that pin lines up with. And then you can just go ahead and drop your gear back in, grab your pin. Slide that back in there and, you know, you got it all back together again. So, I don't think I pinned slide, eh. No, nope, see, I pinned in slide the whole way in there yet. You'll feel it. The pin will drop in that little hole in there. Um, sometimes they can be a little tricky, as you guys can see. <laughs> 
little side tip that I just learned. It's definitely easier to slide your pins into the holes first than dropping your gear in there. Once you get the pin lined up, get it seated in the hole. Now that is a very snug fit between that pin and the plastic as far as there's not a lot of tolerance. So make sure the grease is out of there also because you'll be pushing that pin in there and the pin will want to pop itself back out because the grease that's in the hole is forcing it back out under the pressure. So make sure the holes are cleaned out. And then once you get your pin lined up, you can then slide your gear right on and it's all back together. So that's how you take all that apart. I'm gonna go ahead and pick out some fluid here and we're gonna fill this thing up properly. Now off the top of my head, I'm not sure of the weight of the stock weight fluids in the 4S line. I was just briefly trying to look it up and I honestly couldn't find the stock fluids. However, what I've been usually running in most of my 3S and 4S rigs in the past, um, that usually felt pretty good and was overall or all around pretty good, was 20,000 weight in the rear and 30,000 in the front. Now you obviously wanna put a little heavier fluid in the front so you don't get that ballooning. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this thing up um, with some 20K and get this thing properly filled um, and let this settle for a few minutes. As you guys can see, this thing is extremely, extremely low. I mean, it's only filled up probably about a quarter of the way of where it should be at. I mean, I always top it to where you'll see in here that there's, a, like I said, a high set of gears and a low set of gears. I always like filling it to where it's just covering the lower set of gears and covering completely the input gear. That's kind of where I fill it. Um, I've seen some guys fill them up more, but I've had pretty good luck with doing that to where the lower set of gears on one side are completely covered. This one right here, you'll see the high, low. Fill it to where it's just covering the low one. While you're waiting for your diff fluid to settle there, it's always good to check over the rest of the stuff. As you guys can see, the inside of this chassis is nice and clean, but this isn't the stock chassis. This is now the third chassis I've had on this car before I got the M2C bash bar. Um, I did crack the chassis once after I had the bash bar on there, but if you guys seen that video, um, I mean, nothing was going to save that. But ever since doing the bash bar on here and the new M2C uh, hinge pin brace on the back, uh, the chassis has been holding up amazing. But check in there, make sure it's not filled up with a bunch of dirt, sand, or grime. Look over the rest of it. You know, give yourself a moment here while <laughs> the nice slow process of the fluid settling in takes. But she's looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and reverse the process and start putting this back together again. Important note here while you're putting, your, when you're putting this back together again, as I've said now a few times, there's a low gear and a high gear. Now also you'll notice on your cap here that there is one side that has a, a dimple that sticks up and then one that has a dimple that's sunken in. And obviously you wanna load or line up the dimple that is sticking up in the air out of the case right there with the low gear and you'll see that these plastic pieces here kind of line everything up but you want to go ahead and line all that stuff back up again um, give it just a little bit of a wiggle back and forth and she should fall right back together again uh, nice and tight everything lines up make sure that it's even the whole way around that it is seating properly and then go ahead and put in your four screws and uh, do not tighten these down with your drill you can get them close but make sure you finish off that process by hand this is usually what I do. I'll get the drill, get them almost where they're just starting to touch, and stop it right there. And then, if my tip will let go, grab your hand driver and finish them off with this because that way you can properly feel when it's tight and usually go around them completely around and then go around a second time just to make sure that they are nice and snug because as you tighten one side it'll also tighten down the other a little bit and you'll notice you can get an extra little little eighth of a turn or so out of them so I usually go around them two or three times to make sure everything is nice and snug so you don't get the fluid leaking out of there and then you lose all the diff fluid you just put in now for putting it back together, you're just going to do the same process you did taking it apart. You want to go ahead and get your input gear, your pinion gear lined up first. Get that spinning on there nice and freely. And I knew that the side without the pinion is what I had on originally. Slide that back together again. Put your two screws in there and go ahead and install your drive shafts. And uh, she's almost ready to go back in the car. 
once you got the case screwed back together and make sure that everything smooth moves and you know slides along real nice and easy again you don't want it binding up in any spot because if it's binding up anywhere there's something out of alignment or something um you know crooked <laughs> it's the best way to describe it but you want to go make sure it all spins nice and freely again and then we're going to go ahead and install our drive shafts now again when putting your drive shafts back on make sure that your grub screw is lining up with the little dimple on your input um, there because if you don't that thing will work itself off real fast and your drive shaft will fall off so make sure that's lined up tightened pushed in the whole way nice and snug and then go ahead and tighten up your grub screws all right well now we got the whole rear diff all back together again she's ready to go in there now what you're going to do is go ahead and drop this back in there get your drive shafts lined up and slid back together again put that in there and then add your grease and i'll show you um, the grease i use and how i do that and again these drive shafts only go back together one way there's a large way and all of a sudden you'll turn them and then they suddenly slide together just like butter you shouldn't have to fight with them to get them together they should slide right together real easily and then you can go ahead and set the whole piece back down in there again Everything feels good, so I'm going to go ahead and get my red and tacky grease, and uh, just don't go crazy. You don't have to fill that whole diff case up. Just kind of turn the gear, smear a little bit on the gear, turn a little bit, smear a little bit more. Don't have to go all hog wild with it, just so that it's nice and lubed up. And this is what I mean. This is all I do is just smear a little bit around all the teeth, and that's all she really needs. But just turn the gear the whole way around until you get all of them coated like that. And yeah, guys, I cut through the under there, but... When I'm working on these, I like to throw an old tire or something underneath the car to kind of keep it up so you're not fighting with it. And because whenever the wheels push all or the chassis goes all the way down, it wants to push the diff case out of the diff. So it's nice when it's supported by something. But now that that's all together, all we're going to do now is go ahead and drop the upper part of the diff case back on there again. Line up your shocks. Get all the plastic pieces lined up again. And it should seat right back down on there again nice and smooth there shouldn't be any gaps between there i mean you guys can see everything fit up and flushed up great i'm going to go ahead and put the screws in underneath and then we're going to go ahead and get the shocks mounted back up and get a few last little bits and pieces but as you guys can see uh, this is not a hard process on a 3s or 4s line it's a super easy to do it's just a few screws i know if you're just starting on a hobby you can feel a little intimidating te tearing the discs apart especially but um, just take your time, and it's honestly not that bad. And if you, again, if you ever have any questions that I can help with, feel free to drop them in the comments. So once I get the initial screws put in the bottom, holding the div case back together again, drop it back down. I usually like to put the upper links on so that you're not fighting with the wheel flopping in and out. And then I go ahead and do the shock. So I'm going to go ahead and get those back on, and then we'll go ahead and get the motor and everything else put back in. And honestly, guys, one of the most frustrating things about putting this car back together again sometimes are getting these links on. Because these are the two screws, this one and the one on this side of the two you pull out in order to get these links off. And sometimes getting these lined back up can be very frustrating. Not the screw, but the little insert that's on the upper part of the link here. Um, getting that into that little slot can get a little frustrating. So what I like to do is grab a little, a real small screwdriver and line it up first with the screwdriver because it'll slide the whole way through. And then once it's in place, then grabbing the screw and putting it in. It seems to make life a little bit easier and a little less frustrating. Another note, when you're doing anything with your shocks or taking them off or on, remember that the little guards on them face forward, along with the front face forward for stuff hitting them. I did a video like three years ago on a 3S car, and I think the most comment I had was the fact that I had one of my shocks back on backwards when I put it together. It's amazing what people will find um, to nitpick at. <laughs> Alrighty, well, we got our shock screws back in. We got our upper links back together. I got the screw put in that keeps the uh, upper part of the bumper attached to the rear skid. Now, all we're gonna do is get the motor and the slide and the center brace back in there again. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, well, this is all easy enough. Um, you got your whole motor here. Make sure you keep track of this little plastic piece and this red, because these sometimes like to fall out. So make sure you keep an eye on that does not fall out and disappear anywhere. So you go ahead. Get everything lined back up again down in here on either side there's a slide there and a slide on this side along with the little slides that are on your motor itself you go ahead and get those lined up and you start pushing it in now sometimes you might have to kind of turn the wheels a little bit to get the splines lined up and it should snap right in easy enough like that then you go ahead and take your little red piece 
slide it between the center part of the chassis and your motor mount. Go ahead and put that screw in and flip your little lever over here. This is on the, I think this is only on the, um, the new crate and the new Outcast. I don't think that they did these on the new 3S, but they might have. But this little lever also you got to pull out um, in order to get the motor to slide backwards. But go ahead, put that screw in there. We're going to go ahead and drop our brace on, put that back on, and she's ready to rock and roll. And now I didn't forget my center drive shaft. I'm going to go ahead and slide that back in there again and get the bearing lined up with this little notch that's in here. I mean, we get that lined up and then get it pushed over the red spline and just like that, except I did not get my bearing lined up properly. Just keep that back a little bit further. You want to get it to where it just, so when it's ready to enter the red spline, your bearing's sitting in that spot and then you turn it and now it's locked in there. There's also this little rubber O-ring right on the drive shaft. You want to push that basically up to the front of the bearing. Drop this down and slide that back together. And she's about ready to roll. All right, well, I'm just tightening up the screw here. I got everything in here. She's um, back to 100%. And again, when you're going over the car and doing stuff like this, it's good to go over every screw. And I mean every screw. Check all your motor screws, fan screws, everything and make sure that all of it is tight there's nothing coming loose because you get one random screw falling out of a shock or something stupid and uh there goes your bash day unfortunately and ends it a little soon but that is all there is to it guys definitely very easy especially once you've done it once um you'll feel super comfortable doing it again and uh, don't be afraid of those differentials um just take your time pulling screws out keeping track of the screws what you had and uh, it's easy enough to do and again, I highly stress anybody that's getting any new car out of the box. Um, you know, if you want to take it out for that first little rip, um, <laughs> you know, I understand. But it's it, you got to open up these differentials because some of them come with like what I had where they were a quarter of the way filled. Some have shown up. I've seen many people with none. There was no fluid in the diffs at all. And if you run that thing and go ripping that thing around with no fluids in there, that differential is going to melt down in no time. And now you're having to replace the whole thing where if you just spend, you know, 20 minutes tearing it down, checking the diffs and all the fluids. You know, at least you know you're safe there and they're properly filled. So it's definitely not a bad idea to do that right off the start. But anyway, guys, I hope the video was helpful for any guys out there that are just getting into the hobby and, uh, you know, haven't torn open a diff and was kind of looking for a little bit of guidance. Um, I know a lot of times I wish I could have found some of these videos when I first started out because it was just a guessing game. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. And like I said, if you guys got any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. And uh, guys, if you're enjoying the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. But that's going to do it for today. So until next time, y'all be safe. Be careful out there. Peace out, everybody.